All right. This is a cool trick that I saw uh, in a video with Tom Lord Algae, who is my absolute favorite mixer. Something that probably would have been a little too uh, scientific, technical for me. When things start to get too sciencey and you start zooming in too close and you start doing too much manipulation in the computer, I'm out. You know, it's not musical to me. Yeah, I use Pro Tools because it's accessible. I'm a computer guy, I'm in the computer age, but I also like to keep things really simple and kind of pretend that Pro Tools is my console and tape machine as much as I can. But it is good to have tools when it's time to bail yourself out. It doesn't help to make a restriction in either direction. Right? I'm always gonna chop it up or I'm never gonna chop it up. You, you wanna be somewhere in the middle because you're an idiot for not using a tool if you have it. Basically, this video has a lot to do with phase. When you talk about phase, um, the biggest thing people talk about is polarity being positive or negative. And if you're gonna flip it or not flip it. Every preamp, lots of EQs in Pro Tools, in all your DAWs, have a phase switch on them. You hit the phase and inverts it, and it'll flip the wave upside down. Um, you could actually even go into Audio Suite and invert it. A really good, thorough, basic coverage of this is uh, Recording Revolution, Graham Cochran's Five Minute to a Better Mix about phase. That video years and years ago, I couldn't figure out why every time I turned up a snare drum or I added low end to it, it just wasn't like working. That video answered the question. Because what happens is, is you get a lot of mics all looking at a source, especially with drums. They all need to communicate. They all need to agree on the perspective they have of the source. It takes time for a wave to get to a mic, and by the time it gets there, I guess they go positive or negative. I don't know, you might be able to search more and comment down below because I would love to know the answer to it, but I just know it happens. So a good example of this, right here I have three kick drums. Whoever recorded this took a, an in mic, an out mic, and a sub. Kind of assume that the out mic is outside the head and the sub is probably like an NS10 speaker or something that's really just catching sub low ass frequencies. So you can see here, I have my kick mic. And then I have the out mic. And Zooming in right now, I can see that their waves are misaligned just a little bit, but if you had a tape machine and you were going through a console and you could hear that things aren't adding up when you drop them in together, right? You have your in mic, you have your out mic, they sound certain ways and then you put them together and they don't add up to each other. They, they kind of, you kind of hear low end cancel out a little bit. The best you could do is flip the phase and, and hope that it gets better. I have this EQ set up and uh, it has a, a phase switch right here. That's all it's gonna do. Um, on this, so let's take a listen and see what happens when I flip phase on these two waves. You hear a lot of sub frequencies on the in mic when they're, when they're not flipped, just the way they're playing. But when you do flip them, you do hear much more of those lowers, probably the 80, 60, ish hertz kind of thing. So they're slightly adding up to each other. A more dramatic version of this is gonna be in the sub uh, mic and, and the kick in. So let's take a listen to that. And I'll, we'll play one and then the other and then both. Right, so when they're together, you hear uh, the attack and you hear the sub because they're pretty separate just in what they're capturing. But when I flip the phase on the out mic, all of a sudden it, it sounds like I'm sitting outside of the head a little more. And uh, there's a little less flaming, a little less flaming. Um, but so I can see that flipping the, the polarity on it, you know, so this is the in mic came in positive and the out mic came in negative, but the bigger thing is that they're not hitting at the same time, which is which makes a lot of sense, right? If you have a mic, you know, uh, in the head, and then you have a mic a little further away from the head. So, it's a slightly different phase problem. By the way, this is the same for top and bottom snare. It's almost at a point where you know you mic something right top and bottom if it comes in, it will always be 
opposite because you're literally catching the opposite side of the head. So you, you kind of always want to flip bottom snare mic if you're going to use it. So what TLA does or has done on, you know, a bunch of sessions. So the in and the sub are coming in complete opposite polarity, right? The out mic is coming in positive, just like the in mic is coming in positive. So flipping it, whether it gets better or worse one way or another, and that's up to you. Maybe you like the sound of it out of phase. Chad Blake talks about sometimes he wants the sound of it out of phase because it cancels out the, the middle section and you can get top. Maybe you like it. That's totally good. Just know that this is happening. So what TLA will do in a session that's really bad um, is he will actually literally be for break. Uh, line them up and get them to line up a little more. Um, obviously, in this case with kicks, the outer mic is catching more low end, which takes more time to well up, so the waves are, are wider and longer. But that kind of works itself out after close to the initial, initial transient, in my experience. The way I do it um, is I make sure I have tab to transients on right here, click a little beforehand, hit tab. Now that brought me to the, the hit the transient, the moment that the mic, or Pro Tools at least, processed a hit happening. And then what I'll do is I'll tab to transient um, the kick mic, and actually you could see that it, it went a little off, so I'll fix that. And then what I do is I copy that, and I will come back up to here, and I hit down, which is the colon button, and I paste. And now they're hitting at the same time. Um, cool for an in and out mic. Where I got into trouble on this particular session is I had a bunch of mics. Um, so there's a snare happening and Right, so some cool things are happening in there, some cool sounds, but you could hear as I started dropping in mics, like this fat mic under the glue, it was probably further back in the room. And you kind of have to judge based on the song, like, oh, that mic is supposed to come in later. That's the cool part. That's a room. You know, I want a pre-delay to it. I want the natural room delay to it. Sometimes it's just not working out and you're flipping phase and you're driving yourself nuts. There was a record I worked on where I was just flipping phase for, for freaking weeks on the thing. I just could not get it to communicate right. And honestly, I wish I had applied this. And then you can hear when I drop the sub in, it's counteracting the snare. And so all of a sudden you have this, this weird war where it's like, all right, well, this works with that mic, this works with that mic, but these don't work when I flip them. Here's the rule that TLA lives by and CLA, match everything to the snare. So what you do is I will find the initial transients of the snare here, that's where it hits, right? And then that's gonna be my point that I bring everything to. So here I have this glue mic and I will look in here. And a lot of times you can use tab to transients. It's not always gonna um, get the most accurate. In this case, there might be some compression on these tracks, a uh, little bit of pre-hits, but use your ears, try to find a hit that they can all agree on. Um, so now I have this broken at its transient, right? And I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna come right to where my point is of the start and I will hit colon until I get to my track and just paste it. And now there's no, no chance of me wiggling the track, trying to drag it around, because otherwise you drag it and you can just end up you know, misplacing it all together. And in this case, since it, it is reversed, now you're gonna, you're gonna flip phase on that and it should line up pretty well. Yeah, so you can, that's the difference between the drums working together or canceling out. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be cramming low end into stuff and going, every time I solo the snare, it sounds fat. Every time I solo the kick, it sounds great. Once I drop in these nine room mics, it's not working. But when I solo the room mics, they work. And this is, when you really start chasing your tail, this is a, a way out. This can be a path home. And you know, you can literally go through and do it with every, every mic that you can find a snare hit, which luckily, hopefully, <laughs> is every mic. So right here, looks like the snare hit to me. Looks like the snare hit to me, so I'll break it, copy, and I'm gonna go back to snare, and I'm in parentheses, and now that's gonna be lined up. And it's already positive. So 
go through and do this with all these things. And the last thing you want to do here, once you have these, so you can see that I got, um, I hit a transient. That's like the second one in the song because the first thing in the song is a kick. So you want to make sure you unravel now that you have it in time from that transient, you want to unravel it to come back this way. So I actually used this trick before I saw um, that TLA would do it on drums. I like to keep things really simple to avoid this phase issue. You know, I, I, got, I got 99 mics and phase is a problem, right? So I usually, I'll put like a 57 on my guitars just to keep it simple, stupid. But every now and again, uh, I like to use two mics just because I get something EQ'd out of them. I really like it. There was one record I did four mics. It usually is I'm gonna audition a mic and I end up just liking the way that they blend. I print it down to one track or to a stereo track or whatever. So even when I use four mics, I'll print it down to one track just because I liked the tonal balance of it, but I don't wanna be juggling those kind of mics. This was recorded by my buddy uh, years ago for my solo record and he didn't know what was going to be the future of this song. So he put up a couple of mics for decisions to be made later, which we've had many fights about, Pat. And now I'm trying to remix it, and there are two mics that I like the sound of. Um, and so there's this one, which looks like it was a 609. <laughs> And then there's this mic, which just says orange. Um, not sure what it was. One's a little brighter, a little more brittle. One's really blocky and mid-rangey and bitey, and it's awesome. When I add them together, they don't sound uh, brittle and mid-rangey. They sound cancely. And actually that sound that you're hearing is called comb filtering. Not a great thing. I mean, I can try flipping, but I can already tell that because they're comb filtering, that's a slip issue. That's when things start to generate a frequency between the two of them that isn't even happening. So here, I'll try flipping one of the mics and let's just see how if it gets better. That would be cool if I was doing a megaphone effect <laughs> for a guitar. Um, but obviously it is not 100%. It's, it's called 180 degrees. They're not 180 degrees out. So let's see what the hell is happening. And so you can see here, they're coming in the same, same direction, uh, same degrees, same polarity, whatever the, whatever the hell you wanna call it. But they're coming in at slightly different times, which is completely understandable because uh, a guitar is gonna be upper frequencies, they're tighter waves, but if the mic is, is off, you know, a little closer, a little further away, if you don't have your diaphragms dead lined up, and back in the day, this is why people used to tape mics, people still, Chris Walla talks about, he prefers to just tape the mics because then anywhere you move them, they're all ready together. Uh, and they make clips for that, which is awesome. Knowing where your diaphragms are helps a lot, and you can check this thing. So you have two options here. You can pull up a time shifter, which I've seen uh, people do, and kind of, um, you know, try and judge. So this one, maybe it's coming in, I don't know. Let's try five samples early. That sounds way closer. Let's try six samples. All right, that's incredibly close for me. Um, you can do the time adjuster, but what you're actually doing is you're taking the hit that came in first and you're moving it back. And even if it's six samples, that just bothers me, right? I'm doing everything to a finite amount of time, especially because I'm not gritting stuff. So the playing and the looseness and the feel is important, even down to six samples, which honestly isn't that important. You can do this if you want to. I don't wanna run a plug in the whole time. I don't wanna audio suite it. What I'm going to do is, let's see if tab transies works. Hit a tab, break it, right? Okay, great. And I'm gonna pull the one that's late, which is the 609 here. I'm gonna hit command copy, 
and then I could highlight here and I hit P and then bam. And here, let's see what happens when I flip the face. That's pretty close. It's probably about as close as you're gonna get. These aren't the exact same source, so I, it, you're never gonna get to a point where it cancels out and you don't hear it like you could do in mastering or, or you know, uh, with the other like flipping phase tricks to see what the difference is in harmonics and stuff like that. Um, these are two different mics. They're, they're capturing a different image, even though it's the same signal or whatever. So you can see that canceled out a lot of low end. The other thing with this kind of slippage with mics on a guitar that actually is even almost more important to me than the body of the guitar, which is important, is that when they start slipping by, you know, single samples, five, six samples, it literally rubs off top end and you get rid of the bite and you get rid of all the clarity and all the good stuff about a guitar. You really want it to be clear and this is why I don't use too high a gain. That's uh, you know, that's the TLA trick. If flipping phase isn't working, try lining up your tracks in the computer because if you recorded your band and you can't figure out why things aren't working, you put a mic on the snare, you put a mic on the overheads, why isn't this all working? Line everything up to the snare drum. If you have a bass, guitar and you put two mics on the amp plus a distortion channel plus a di and it's not lining up try lining it up try lining it up <laughs> um if you like this video please like it if you like this video like it subscribe tell your friends about it and comment below if you uh want to hear more about what i talked about here or if you need me to expand on anything see you later See ya later. Oh, that's funny. See ya later.